Hello guys, CryptoGrounds here. Welcome back to another Unity Antimatter Dimensions video. Today we are going to be working on achievements. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you smash the like button, subscribe to my channel if you're new, and turn on those notifications for future live streams and videos. And also comment all your uh, questions, feedback, all that good stuff below. Um, yeah, it's another one of these videos where I've been gone for a really long time. I've uploaded a, a grand total of four videos. Actually, no. Five, like five videos yeah six videos this month damn i'm doing terrible i i feel deeply sorry guys um but good news we're very close to 2000 subscribers already yay so that's good another bad news eh, i'm losing views it's okay i just need to post more often i was getting at least around 1500 and now i'm back at 1000 so i need to fix that i need to get back into the game so yeah, anyways, I've been really busy with school starting and hockey starting as well and working very hard on my game, doing a bunch of bug fixes and all that cool stuff. So yeah, anyways, let's pick up the Antimatter Dimension series again because I really missed working on this. But yeah, anyways, let's get ready for the achievements. So uh, I'm just going to set up the UI real quick. Okay, so now what I did here is that I made a new game object to put my dim sack and my dimensions inside, and I anchored it to stretch so that I can do this, and it stretched just fine. And I also made an achievements empty game object here as well, and it's the same place, same, same, same. And I also added the achievements button, okay? So now I'm going to start working. Let's actually take a look at the achievements, okay? So... Now, I'm going to do a different achievement kind of style rather than what I did in my idle game tutorial video. So if you're here just to learn how to make achievements, this is a great tutorial for you. Um, but basically what we're going to do is that we're going to assign each achievement as an ID. Now, I'm not going to do any of the arts. I'm going to do like the titles and stuff. But I'm basically going to assign every single achievement as an ID. Okay. And we're going to do the same uh, multiply achievement multiplier and stuff like that. Okay. So... Of course, we're not going to get all of them, but I'd rather get some uh, play for eight days. Extremely small time multiplier. And I don't know what this is, so I'm just going to like ignore some of these achievements. What I'll probably do is the first two... Uh, I think I'm going to do the first two rows. So that's... that's uh, Let's see, how many are there? Eight in each row. So that's 16 achievements. That shouldn't be too bad. I might do just one. We'll see how this video goes. But um, so basically, we're just going to do by a single dimension, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. Pretty easy. So uh, yeah, I actually could do two rows because that's really easy. And um, reach a infinite antimatter and uh, encounter 50 different news messages. So this one, we're, this is just going to be like a null thing. So I'm just going to leave this as an empty one for now. Probably just like like my own achievements. Um, have exactly 99 8th achievements. Uh, and I also have some of the rewards too. Uh, and yeah, we'll just do the rest of these. Okay. So anyways, let me just set up my interface once again for the achievements. Also, I just wanted to mention that I am not doing the secret achievements. Since it really has no in-game benefits. So I'm not going to do that. Okay, I'm back. So basically, the one of the things you're going to learn in this series is efficiency, right? So we're not going to just copy and paste this one achievement, right? We're going to create a, a prefab out of it to make our lives a lot easier. So we have our achievement here. We can honestly just put a achievement title in here. And then once we are done with that, we can just drag this achievement. Uh, actually, no, no, not, not yet. Not yet. I forgot. One more thing. Uh, I'm gonna keep this button here because we don't actually I'm gonna get rid of this button this button right here because we don't interact with it It's automatic, right? So um, We're gonna create a, a class. Okay, and this is gonna be called just achievement If I can spell it right first of all, so we're gonna create the achievement script and This will be a thing that we can assign to each now. What's really easy about this is that when we uh, create our our ID system, we can look through all of the achievements and then give them an ID. And basically what we're looking for is the achievement script game component because we can do, we can um, look for game components inside our achievements right here. So basically we'll just look for this and whatever game object has it, we'll add it to a list 
And yeah, it's, it's really cool how this works. And it's much easier than just having to drag all of our text in manually. And uh, this is uh, easily expandable too. Okay, so it's very easy. So we're gonna have two scripts. We're gonna have this one and we're gonna have the achievement manager. Now, I'm gonna finish this one first because we kind of have to create our prefabs and our objects first of all, and then we'll create our achievement manager. So um, as writers opening up, uh, we can delete pretty much all of this. And yeah, we can get rid of this too. Really, the only thing we're gonna need in here is the image because we want to be able to change the color once it's done so we're gonna um, just uh, we can just give an achievement and also we want to implement the unity engine.ui interface okay so now we have our public image and we also need um, a public image ach achievement we also want our text too and this is just gonna be the title text and that's all we gotta do in here right it's just an e it's pretty empty Okay, so now what we can do here is that we can assign our image and our text. Oh, this is a TMP text, I forgot. So we actually have to additionally import the using a TM Pro and replace this text with a TMP text. Okay, and now we should be able to drag this text because basically all the text we're using in this game is TMP text or Text Master Pro. Cool, so now that's we're done with that. We can drag this achievement game object into a prefab folder. Cool. So now we can just uh, simply position this however we'd like. I'm going to do that. I'll be right back. Okay. So I finished that. If you guys want the exact dimension. So basically what I did is that the row is uh, 1470 by 175. Also want to anchor this at the top like that. And each achievement is 150 by 150. And uh, they are evenly spread out by, I think, 35, right? Um, let's do the math real quick. Mm, ah, shoot. I think it is. I think it's 35. I Hold on one second. Uh, 185. Okay. So, yeah. They're each spread out by 185 pixels. And, yeah. So, it looks like that. So, I'll show you this one. And this one, and you should pretty much be able to figure out from there. Anyways, let's actually start getting ready for the code. And I'm just going to leave these titles as is because you know, I'm just going to make this uh, achievement zero to stay consistent. So I don't have to change them all. Now, this is going to be our ID. So we're going to do zero based index. So zero index instead of one. So we start from zero and we end at seven instead of one through eight. Okay. So now what we're going to do is go to our scripts. We're going to create an empty and it's going to be called the achievement manager. Okay, and now we're going to create a separate script called the Achievement Manager. Okie dokie, and I'm going to let that create itself. And also, that looks a little off. Actually, no, it might be just my eyes. Also, this green is just for our, um, this like that. Okay, and once it's complete, for example, we'll just set it to green like this. Okay, and once they're all done, we will set it to uh we'll set it to green and before this will be uh this green bar would be gray okay anyways enough talking let's just uh get started okay so there's two things we're gonna have to look for in order to find these achievements um we need to have a game object in order to find these right okay so we're gonna have actually no it's not a game object oh yeah it is a game object because we are locating uh inside a game object so we're not gonna look from row Okay, actually, I think we might have to. I'm not sure, but let's just try achievements for now. Okay, and I might have to actually create a separate gate, a separate prefab, or like a separate script for this row. So I'll have to search for every row, look for an achievement. So we might have to do that. I am not completely sure, but we we'll, we are here to experiment. So I'm gonna create a game object. Okay, and this is gonna be called our achievement screen. Okay, and we're gonna create a list, and so so far it's empty, and it's gonna be a list of achievements. Remember that achievement uh, class that we made earlier, and it's gonna be called uh, achievements, and it's gonna be a new achievement list. Okay, and we also need to import um, uh, system collections generic, which is where lists come from. All right, and that's all we need from up here for now. 
and let's just start this in a public void start okay so now what we're doing is we're gonna look through all we're gonna look for all of these right here okay so basically we do uh, for each var um, achievements so I'm just gonna do atch for achievements okay inside achievement screen dot get components in children okay now remember it says get components in children okay and now in here we're gonna put in our type and that is achievement like that uh let's see oh it's the other way around oops like that okay so we're creating a for each statement so basically we're gonna look in for all of uh, we're gonna look through all of our game objects and whichever one has an achievement uh, component inside one of those we're just gonna add it to our list which we do in here so to add it to our list all we gotta do is achievements dot add and then we do atch very easy now I'll show you guys this in a second actually I'll show you this right now okay so you're not gonna see anything special but you're gonna see this list right here fill up which is really cool so for our achievement screens we're just gonna drag this achievements right here okay Save it and run it. And we'll see this uh, this list fill up. Hopefully, if it works. Okay, cool. So it did. So you see now we have access to all of our achievements here. Okay. So we can we basically don't even have to assign an ID, right? Because the ID is the index of these um, right here, right? So we're basically going to go through each row and so on. So here, if we copy and paste this row and go under it, which we're actually going to have to do anyways. Uh row two I guess and so if we have these under you're gonna see how it's gonna basically go through row one first and then row two so let's save it and go to our achievement manager and observe cool so we have eight, uh, 16 achievements so basically it goes through row one first and then it hops down to row two so now what are the benefits of actually doing this you don't have to drag every single text and image and I'm there are a lot of achievements you can obviously see in look at all these achievements. I don't think you're going to want to drag all of these texts over and over again and these images. I don't think that'll be very fun. So this just saves you a lot of time and it allows you to expand it whenever you like. You can add achievements however you like, wherever you'd like, and whenever you'd like. Okay. So we have the achievements. We have access to them. We have to actually start like setting them, right? Okay. So what we're going to do here is that I'm going to create a dictionary. Okay. Or you can create a list too. Both are fine. But actually, let's create a list. Okay. So we're going to create a string list. And honestly, we can create an array. Hmm. Which one should we do? I think we're going to do. Oh, sorry. Um, I think we're just going to do a list. Okay. And this can be uh, achievement names. Okay. And now the thing is, we can predefine these and we can. Uh, easily modify these anytime without having to interfere okay so let's see we want to grab our achievement names from here okay so I'm gonna do this myself but basically I'm just gonna grab the first 16 here okay I'll be right back okay so I finished the list of achievements and I also just wanted to mention that I added my own achievement to replace fake news um, because I, I, I will probably add the news ticker at some point, but I replace it with floating antimatter. So basically, crypto clickers reference, I'm going to be doing 3.40 E38 antimatter, and you get this achievement, okay? So that's really what this achievement is going to reward. And so I'm going to split these achievements in groups of eight, so we'll just uh, press enter right here, okay? So we know that these are the first eight, and so on, okay? And... Oh yeah, I also wanted to add, um, so we're going to have lots of rows eventually. So let's just add this row component, right? So we're going to create a new script called a row, okay? Now I know these might be really pointless things to do. You can easily just drag in a few rows and it's like no, no biggie. But I just want to stay consistent on how we are efficiently doing this. And uh, basically this is just an image component, okay? Uh, okay, we also need to add the Unity dot uh, Unity Engine dot UI UI 
um, namespace, okay? And now what we're going to do is we're going to create a ref um, not a reference, but a uh, we're going to drag this image into here. And we, oh shoot, I should have done it here. Yeah, it's okay, it's okay. Uh, let me just slide this up. Okay, delete that row. Okay, so we're gonna, this is gonna be a prefab, okay? And I'm just gonna drag this into our prefabs folder, and there we go, voila. So now our row prefab is basically just a bunch of achievements. So you can just drag this in now, and we have another row of achievements. Very cool. And we're gonna name that row two, and this will be row one, okay? So now what we're gonna do in our achievement manager is we're gonna create another list, okay? <clears throat> And this will be for our rows, okay? And I could, should have named this row better. I should have done like achievement row or something, but it's okay. So it's gonna be a new list of type row called rows, and it's gonna be equal to a new list of type row. Okay, and now in our start method, we're gonna do the exact same thing. So I'm just gonna copy and paste this. Var row is equal to, or var row, or sorry, for each var row in achievement screens, get components in children, and we're gonna do row instead. Okay, and now we do achievements.add, so replace achievements with row, and replace row, uh, atch with row, like that. Okay, so now it's going to basically search for all of our rows and add them to our achievements, um, or our rows list right here. Okay, <clears throat> cool. So now what we're going to do here is we need to find a way to um, set our achievements to... To complete right so instead of just having a stat so this is a mistake I made with crypto clickers or something like that or like when you like unlock something from a milestone the thing I did wrong is that I would keep check I would set like a high so let's say I get to e308 we right or sorry ethereum so let's say I get there the problem is that I set the highest to E308, and uh, it's based off of that, which can cause issues. If that gets NAN, then it gets screwed. So what I'm gonna do here instead, is I'm gonna make a method where we basically set the achievement to true, and we only need to check it uh, when it's false, right? So that's how the Steam achievements work, okay? So I'm gonna do the exact same thing here. So let's create a method called uh, unlock achievements, okay? And we're just gonna have an int ID in here, okay? And remember, we're only calling this if this is false, so really there's no need to do this. Now, before we continue, before we carry on, we need to be sure that our achievements uh, list is up to date. Now, the issue with, the, this is something that I think we're, we're going to have a little bit of struggles with. It's this right here. It's data. <laughs> okay, it's creating a list in here, okay? So we need to be sure to constantly update this list, okay? So let's just add a list in here, and this is just going to be an int. Now we're not doing an array because it's easier to add on to this list. Okay, so this is going to be our list of achievement uh, IDs. Okay, actually, no, we're going to create a dictionary instead. Actually, no, our system doesn't support. Does it? I think it does. Are we doing? Uh, binary formatter convert to base. It looks like, yeah, it looks like we're still, oh, we're not doing JSON. Okay, so we can do dictionaries. Phew, we're safe. Okay, so basically we're going to create a, a dictionary for our, oh, really? You don't have to. Okay, <laughs> sorry guys. We're going to, we're just going to do a list for bulls because we're doing a zero index uh, system for our IDs anyway, so it really doesn't matter, okay? And this give me a new list, and for now the size is 16, okay? We're gonna have to change this, which is a little tricky, okay? <clears throat> so we're gonna put this in our data, okay? Now in our achievement manager, I'm gonna close all of this because it's really not necessary. Um, in our, what's this right here? Oh yeah, we can close that. So in our start method, we need to detect to see if this achievement unlocks is good enough. Now, instead of checking to see if it's good enough, we want to expand it, okay? 
we want to add on to it rather than replacing all of our current unlocks because that will just make people angry when we add new achievements, okay? Also in our data, I forgot, we need to do something, okay? So an issue with creating a new list right here is that it doesn't actually do it properly, okay? So we're gonna have to search up a C sharp, create new list, not working, okay? So I can't remember what the exact thing is. Uh. And let me let me find that real quick. Hold on. Okay, I found it. So here's the method that we need to add to our uh, our script. We also need to add system dot link dot enumerable. So make sure you add that at the top. Make sure you have all of these right here. Okay. So the thing with creating a new list is that the capacity is like stuck. All right, when we create a new list, it doesn't like expand. I don't know, it does some weird things where it just sets the list to a size zero. So to fix that, we replace this new list with a private static list type T, which is our bool right here, for example, our generic type. Uh, create list generic type and capacity, okay? And it basically, I'm not exactly sure how it works, but basically it just creates an, an uh, a new list properly. Okay, so we're going to replace this with a create list with a type bool. Okay, and we're going to set the capacity to 16. Okay, and that should be safe. Yeah, we can honestly probably get rid of this too. And yeah, it's fine. Okay, um, okay, so now we can just leave this as is. Okay, so now let's go check our, let's go fix this uh, issue right here. Um, so let's see, we need to find the achievements count. So let's see, if uh, atch or achievements.count is greater than or is greater than um, data dot, oh yeah, we need to implement our game manager. So that is, um, what is it? Dimensions? Uh, it's game controller, right. Okay, so we're gonna add our game to the top, and we're gonna do game dot data dot achievement unlocks dot count. So basically, if this achievements count is greater than our achievement unlocks, then we need to add some more. Okay, so now we do that by creating a for loop, and we need to just add in um, some more falses. Okay, so basically, we're just gonna do var is equal equal to I equals zero, I is less than, um, we're gonna subtract these counts together. Okay, and I'm, I'm really hoping this works. I think it should. I'm kind of just experimenting here. So basically, we're gonna add to our uh, game.data.achievement locks, and actually, let's create a variable here called data equals game.data, just so we don't have to write game dot every time. Okay, and now we're just gonna do data dot achievement unlocks dot add, and we just put in false. Okay, so now it's just gonna fill in until we are equal. Okay, and I think we can just set that to inverse. And you know what? Let's get rid of these brackets. Cool. Okay, so now when we unlock an achievement, we basically just need to uh, set this equal to false. Okay, so we do game not data dot uh, achievement unlocks, and we're gonna set that to true. Okay. Oh, right. <laughs> you gotta do at id and set it equal to true. Okay. Very self-explanatory, and I think I'm gonna create a method where we update our achievement UI because we want to save as much um, CPU as we can. Uh, we're just gonna create a method called update achievement UI and this will be called wow I cannot type and this will be called whenever we unlock an achievement and when we start the game okay at the very end okay so now when we update an achievement we need to scan through all of them and honestly we could probably have another like a secondary update achievement in here where we can do public void update specific achievements UI so we can save even more even though it's not gonna really matter because we're gonna get achievement like very little and at a very little pace I guess a very uh, 
long interval, so it really doesn't matter. But just for the sake of it, we can just do int ID here, okay? And we need to have access to our, our achievements here, okay? So now we just basically do uh, achievements at index ID, and we want to change the achievements, okay? Um, so we're going to set achievements equal to, uh, so, wait, what is this? This is, yeah. So we're going to set this to, uh, we're going to set the color to, um, let's see. I think, yeah, we just need to do game.data dot, uh, unlocks, right? At index ID question mark and basically we're just going to differentiate between the these two colors here so our first one is this red we could just set that to that very easy and honestly we can just do new color and this is an rgb anyways so we can just do one zero zero okay so now we're setting it to this color if it's locked okay so that's locked okay so we need to um do green first so new color, and we're just going to do R, G, B. Okay, so when it's unlocked, we set it to green. If it's not, then we set it to red. Okay, and honestly, we can run through this in a uh, update achievements UI. Uh, so we can do var i equal to zero, and we want to stop at our achievements account. Okay. So when uh, for var i is equal to zero and i is less than the achievements count, we're going to add by one. And in here, we simply just update specific UI. Okay. So now this is very easy. We don't have to update all of the achievements at once. We can just do one when we unlock it. Right. And we're just going to set, we're just going to insert i in here. Okay. So the only time we want to really want to call this update achievement UI is at the very start. Okay. And also we want to check for, we need to do something with our names here because we haven't done absolutely anything. Okay. Um, so what we're going to do here. Oh yeah. We want to update specific UI here. Right. And we're just going to put our ID in here. Um, so in here now, we need to set the text. And now obviously I could just do that in here. Let's do that, because we only need to do it once. So we're gonna create another var i is equal to zero. And if i is less than, or not if, and then we're gonna keep doing this till i is less than, or as long as i is less than the count, we're gonna add by another i plus plus. And now in here, we're gonna set our achievements dot or at uh, i yeah dot title and we're going to set this equal to the achievement names at index i uh is that right oh yeah it's gonna be that text Duh. cool very easy very easy to do it quick ah oh, man i thought we were gonna be able to convert that to for each but i guess not um, so yeah, that's a very easy way to set all of our titles only once because that's the only time we ever need to. And we're honestly very close. We now just pretty much need to do the unlock achievements and this row right here. Okay. So we need to do update row UI. Okay. So we have the, we have the UI. But what about the rows? So we're going to make another method called update row UI. And obviously I'm overcomplicating this by adding a ton of U uh, methods, but I'm really just trying to keep myself clean and trying to reduce how, like, um, how many times certain things need to be run. And uh, also all of these can be private methods since they're only going to be accessed in this meth in this class. Uh, even start, honestly. Actually, no, I'm going to leave it. I'll probably do it after data. So I'm going to do start achievements, actually. Yeah, like that. Okay, so now for our rows, it's a little different. So we're going to have to call this... Um, we're going to have to call this in unlock achievement as well. Okay, and also probably in both. Okay, so now what we're doing in uh, update row UI... Um... 
Okay, so we're gonna also create an yet another method. Uh, let's just copy and paste this. Okay, so we're gonna do update specific row UI. Cool, and this will take in a int ID. And now what we're gonna do here is uh, rows dot or at index ID. Now the only thing we have is an image row. So we're gonna set the color equal to, um, so let's see, we have two colors here. So right now it's set to like this color right here. So now this is the same color as that we can see in uh, antimatter dimensions. So I'm just gonna kinda copy all these float variables over into a notepad. So I, I hate how the, the panel just keeps closing every time I alt tab. It's a very irritating how you can't just like copy and paste or even just copy and paste as like a JSON string, you know, where you can just like format it as like this it's just a listed string, I guess. I don't know. Anyways, we have our float variables here. Uh, just ignore me. For now, we're going to set the color to what we have here. And remember, we have to add the F prefix since they're floats. And like this. And I'm going to shorten these to about... Yeah, that's honestly not going to do much. So I'm just going to short it, shorten it to two decimal places. Because that's really not going to make that much of an impact. Okay, so now we need to differentiate between the gray and the green. So when does this occur? Well, we need to check to see if all of uh, achievements in a row, 1 through 8, are... Um, are good to go, okay? So basically what we're gonna do in here is create a, a temporary variable called, or just a temporary uh, bool, okay? And we're just gonna call this temp, and we're gonna set it to false. Now obviously we can just set this to var, but I, I'm just, I should really start using bool, like instead of var more often, so you guys can actually understand what the variable is, even though like, I mean, you know what? It tells, it tells me what it is here. It's fine. But yeah, so we're going to create a temporary bool variable here. And what we do here is we're going to grab a for loop in here. So var is equal to uh, yeah. So we're going to set i is equal to id. So what is id here? So now remember um, row 0 has indexes 1 through 8, right? And row 1 has indexes 9 through 16. Or actually, well, it's technically 0 through 7, and then 8 through 15, right? Am I right? I feel like it's not. I think it's 1. Uh, I feel stupid. Help. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I had a brain fart for a second. So basically, we need to just kind of check for this right here. Okay. Now, it's a little hard to kind of just convert one into A's. Actually, this might be, not be too bad. So let's say I is equal to one. We want to start at eight. So I think we just set I equal to um, one. No, that doesn't no, it doesn't work like that. I think we just set the set it to equal to yeah, so we set it to ID times eight. So that's the start, right? That's the start. Now what about the end? The end is simply the end is equal to ID times eight. Because this is zero if it's zero, yeah. Yeah. And then we add this by seven. That sounds about right. Cool. So you just have to just problem solve. Okay. So we're going to set the starting ID times 8. Okay. And we want to keep doing this until I is less than ID minus or ID times 8 plus 7. Okay. And I don't believe we have to do any parentheses work, but I'm just going to double check. Yeah, we don't have to. And then we're just going to add I by 1. Okay. So now we want to check to see if this achievement is good. So we're going to create, um, actually, no, we don't need to. So a game dot data dot achievements unlocked at index I. So 
We want to keep setting. Okay. I'd say we just keep setting it equal to whatever this is. Okay. Hmm. I feel like that's weird though. I feel like there is a way. You know what? I have an idea. Well, let's get rid of this right here and let's create an int counter, right? So we want to see if all eight of them are true, right? So what we're going to do here is that if uh, if this is true, if this achievement unlocked is true, then we're just going to add counter, okay? And now we're going to do if counter is gr uh, greater or equal, is basically is equal then, or equal to. If counter is equal to eight, question mark, then we're going to set the achievement row to on, okay? And uh, let's grab this background color here. The nice thing is that we could just do that. And it looks like it's the same for all of them. Very nice. I like that. Otherwise, we're going to set the color equal to this number right here. Okay, don't forget to add the F prefix. Like that. Okay, I'm just going to add the 8 so we don't get any like fade. Okay, so now let's actually move this into... Uh, let's just... Um, yeah, let's do this. We're going to create a private bool. Okay. Now, because remember, we need to eventually add this to our multiplier. So I know there's a lot of stuff going on. But remember, this is very just convenient for us. So we don't have to just, like, you know, check to see if this row color is this. You know, it's, I'd rather just have a method. Um, row, I'm just going to do is row completed. Okay, and we're basically just going to uh, take in another int ID, and we're going to do all of this here, okay? And we're basically just going to return counter. Uh, if Yeah, we're going to return if counter is equal to 8. Simple enough, right? We're basically just moving this to a new method, and instead replacing this, counter equals 8. If it's equal to 8, then we're just going to just replace it with the is row completed ID. Now this is a one-line method. The convenient thing here is that we can eventually loop through all of these is row completed uh, and then add it or multiply it to our uh, this right here. Okay, our row multiplier. Whew. This is a lot going on. I know, guys. Hope you guys are hanging in there. Um, okay, so now we're going to basically do the exact same thing in our private void update row UI. And we basically just call this uh, update specific row UI for rows dot count. Okay, so we're pretty much doing the exact same thing here. Also, can I? Yeah, never mind. Um, now we call this update row UI inside the start achievements. I'm gonna do it right after we call the update U uh, achievements UI. Perfect. So I think we have everything done except for actually triggering the triggering the unlock achievements, right? So what I'm going to do here, since we don't need this anymore, I'm just going to make a new region down here. And this is just UI related. And I, except for the, except for one of them. That is the is row completed. Except for that, because we're going to need that for later. Cool. So now I can just hide the rest of the methods inside this UI related, just like that. And if you guys uh, are still here, make sure you... Uh, have all of this code caught up. Okay. And let's start doing the, let's start doing the action. Okay. So what we're going to do here is we basically just got to check through each achievement here. So the first one should be very easy. It's by a single dimension for a single, a single dimension, right? So I'm going to close this. Honestly, this is kind of actually not close it, but move it anyways. Um, whew, okay, so what we want to do in here is we want to check to see if, now this is not going to be a very clean process, okay? I'm going to be, I'm just going to be real here. This is not going to be a very clean process. We're basically just checking everything manually, right? Uh, we're going to set data equal to game.data here before we kind of not type game dot every time. So if the data dot, um, dimensions so dimensions in an array so we're going to do count so if dimensions count is greater than zero then we simply have to unlock this achievements right here okay and we set that to zero pretty easy okay 
And we're not done here. The other thing we have to add is we, I only want to check this once, okay? So, because if we keep checking this over and over again, this unlock achievement is going to keep running this UI and it's just going to be annoying and it's going to look funky. And it'll also use some CPU. So, the nice thing about, um, oh yeah, so what we can do here um, is add this data.achievements unlocked at index zero. So, if it's false, we haven't unlocked it yet, then we can call this. Now, what's the issue here is that this is an array and we need to call the, the um, at index zero. Okay, so that's pretty self explanatory. So basically, if our first dimensions is greater than zero and we haven't unlocked this achievement yet, we're gonna unlock it. Okay, now we can for loop this. We can honestly for loop through this first row. Okay, just to save up some time because honestly, we're gonna be like doing one, two, three, you know, we can for loop only through this first row. Okay, well, I'm just gonna throw it out there. So far, like we will. I is equal to zero and I is less than eight. Uh, and then we're basically just going to run through this if statement and replace the zero with I, I and I, and we're already done with the first eight achievements. Okay. So now we got to go back to the second row. Okay. So let's see, what is this one to infinity? We're not going to get this one. Right. And also this has a reward too. So we can have to, we're out to manage some of the rewards. And I don't believe any of these have rewards other than, the achievement multiplier. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, so the first one's infinity, and that is pretty easy. You just set if data antimatter is greater than or equal than uh, double dot max value and achievement uh, eight, because remember, we're doing zero index. So this is zero, and this is eight, and this is seven right here. So if we haven't unlocked it, then we're going to unlock achievement number eight. Okay, so now this one is the float. Okay, so we're gonna replace this one with a float dot max value. Pretty easy. And we just change the number here. You can kind of see how to copy and paste this for most of them. Okay, have exactly 99 eighth uh, dimensions. Okay, so we copy and paste this, replace the ID with 10. And this is asking for eighth dimensions, right? Yeah, so this is dimensions count right here. And uh, we're going to replace this with uh, 7 right here. And if it's greater than or equal than, we can basically just greater than or equal than 99. Okay. You guys see the pattern here, I hope. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip along so you guys don't have to hear me talk. And I'm just going to do all the achievements and I'll come back to you after that. Okay, I am back. That was pretty, pretty easy. And... I don't really have to explain. I mean, I guess I can. So basically, this is the. Actually, I think I already did that one. This one is the if antimatter dimension or antimatter is greater than one e eighty, and that's achievement eleven. Dimension shifts is ten. That is uh, this one or dimension boost. We have antimatter galaxies, which is that one. Double galaxy, and then buying a single first dimension when we have 150 of them. So how do we calculate that? So basically what we do is that we check the count for it. If it's greater than uh, or greater than or equal than 150, and we check to see if that dimension level, level, not count, okay, is greater than zero. Because we want to buy a single dimension, right? Not 10, because that's just not going to count. Because this is buy a single first dimension, okay? So again, also, uh, shoot, I wasn't showing this. So... The one thing I also got to do and I got to learn is pop-ups or hover overs or whatever these are called. I haven't learned how to do these, so I'm not going to implement these in this video. Maybe I will eventually, and I'm honestly going to have to. I'll probably have like a boxer here or something. I don't know. But I'm eventually going to have to learn how to do this because nobody's going to know what this is. <laughs> All right. Okay, so we have our uh, achievements done. Let's give them a shot. Oh, yeah, we also want to add this start achievements into our game controller. So let's go back to our game controller script. Also, what's wrong here? Okay, nothing. <laughs> Thanks for the false error. Um, so yeah, let's go back here. And after start, we can do, uh, we also need to add our achievements here. Public achievements, achievements. Okay, what's wrong? 
Oh, achievement manager. Got it. And uh, achievements dot start achievements. Got it. And we can honestly just do update here. Okay. I think things are looking pretty good. So I am expecting some bugs, but I'm also at the same time really confident. Okay. So we have our game here done. Oh, wait. Right, right. Yeah. And in our game manager, we want to drag in the achievement controller. And I think we are good here. I am not sure what's going to happen with achievement names. Let's see what happens there. It's supposed to auto initialize, but we'll, let's just see. Okay, it doesn't. So that's great. So that means using a list was completely useless. So what we can do here is just take this in the start method. <laughs> Unbelievable. You let me down, Unity. So then at the top of the start, you can just simply add achievement names is a new list and then all your strings here. Really inconvenient, but it's okay. It will work regardless of um, whether we have that or in a separate method. And we're just got to deal with it. Okay, so we're seeing we're already getting some errors. We have some null reference. Uh, actually, let's check this out. Let's see what's wrong. I have a I have a. Okay, so we have all of our. Let's see what's going on here. What's going on? So it seems like it's the. It's got to be this. Uh, yeah, yeah, I see. It's this right here, okay? It's this data achievement lock unlocks. The reason why it's doing this is because it's still technically not initialized, which is an issue, okay? <sighs> it's frustrating, okay? So now what we simply got to do. Uh, this is the annoying part. Oh, man. What we're going to do is try catch, okay? Now, I can't really think of another way of doing this other than searching to see if it's null, but I'd rather not do that. So what we're going to do is just set a random temporary variable that we're never going to use to data.achievementunlocks. Now, this might be bad practice. I have no idea if there's a better way. If there is, let me know in the comments below. But basically, we're just going to set this variable to temp, and we're never going to use it, right? I don't want to print anything, because that will I don't want anything to like, build up in the logs. But we're going to set this variable to temp, and it will generate an error. And then we're going to catch that. And what we do here is we set um, our achievement unlocks like so. And also, you see we have this create list here. What we can do here is type data with a capital. Oh, wait. Is this private? Uh, yeah, I want to make this public. Okay. So then you do capital data, uh, create list bool, and your size 16 here. Okay. And honestly, this will just always update, but it's just to initialize the list with some data. Okay. So now this shouldn't be an issue. Crossing our fingers. So save uh, and play. Cool. So we got to start somewhere. We already have our first achievement done. Yep, everything looks good. Let's see. So 100 antimatter is a lot. Let's just keep buying these. Oh, yeah, we got to do the navigation first. Okay. So one more thing before we do this is I'm going to create a new empty object called navigation. Actually, you know what? We can do this in our uh, games manager or game controller because really there isn't much in here. So in here we have uh, we need two screens. So we want to. We want to uh, add. We want to make these uh, here. Let me turn that off. Okay. So basically, what we haven't done yet is add our canvases to the dimensions and achievements. So what to do, or how to do that, is type in gra or something like that and get graphic gray caster, and it'll automatically set up your canvas just fine. Okay. Just like this. And these are the exact settings. You don't shut, uh, touch them at all. Okay, so now in our script, in our game controller, we're going to add two canvases, one for the dimensions canvas, and the second one for our achievements canvas. Wow, I cannot type. I deeply apologize. Okay, so now what we do here is create a navigation system here. Public void uh, navigate. And we have to have our, sh our custom string in here. And the string location will be in here. And in here, at the top, we're just going to set them both to false. Okay, so game object dot set active false. Okay, we do the exact same thing for the achievements. Okay, 
And now under that, we create a switch case for our uh, location. And our first one's gonna be dimensions, right? So dimensions, okay? And that's pretty self-explanatory. We set the dimension canvas to true. And don't forget the break. Okay, and we're gonna do the exact same thing for our achievements. So make sure you replace the correct stuff. Okay, it's cool. We have our navigation system done. Pretty easy, right? And also another thing is that some of this UI we actually don't need to update. Um, let's see. Let's go to our dimensions right here. So we yeah, got tons of stuff in here. Holy cow! I forgot. So you see all this dimension shifts, all this crap down here, okay? You see that? Well, we pretty much don't have to run all this, okay? This is all user interface, except for this dimension, this right here, right? We can honestly just get rid of this, move it to the top, okay? I probably should move this dimension shift boost. I'm curious, what is this? All right, okay, cool. Yep. Okay, so... This is all user interface, correct? Dimensions unlocked, we kind of want that at the top too. Oh yeah, and this dimension count, obviously we want that at the top, above all the user interface. So now, why did we move all that? Well, we want to move this all into a an if statement, right? So we only want to update this UI if game dot, um, let's see, dimensions canvas dot game object dots uh, active self okay now we don't need to do this for achievements because we don't have a constantly updating UI so it's not not nothing we need to worry about after that we move all of this back to our back to this if statement cool beautiful okay that's what ours looks like and now we can finally apply our navigate methods Uh, click the plus sign on both of the buttons, drag script or wherever your game controller is. And now for each button, I'm going to add, oh yeah, I want to add navigate to both buttons. Okay. Now for the dimensions, the string that we put in, the parameter or the argument is dimensions and the argument for this one is achievements. Okay. We're basically just trying to identify which button we're trying or which one we're trying to toggle. So back to our game controller, we need to drag our dimensions canvas and our achievements canvas. Okay, cool. Everything should work as planned. Sweet, we now switch between. So let's get our first uh, second dimension and we have a new achievement. So now let's just casually keep playing the game. Okay, so let's just keep playing. And actually I'm a little impatient. So I wanna see what this row does, right? So one, two, three, four, five. yeah, okay. Just making sure. I've been really like procrastinating working on the achievements because I was just like, eh, I don't really feel like it. Okay, so we have floating antimatter. That's good. Cool. Alrighty, we're almost there. Yeah, we're see we're getting a bunch of these achievements now. Some that we shouldn't even be getting now. It's okay. I just want to see this achievement in action. Okay, one more. And we should have a row complete. Ah, oh, we don't have a row complete. That's a bummer. I think the reason why it's not working, and if I save the game and close, it'll work just fine. Let's see. Let's see if the achievement save in the first place. Cool. Okay, so now the issue is that our rows are not updating. Damn. So let's go to our achievement manager and let's figure this out. So let's see. Um, <sighs> so update row UI occurs at start. Okay. Rows count. Let's see, is completed. I feel like it's something wrong with our is completed, okay? I feel like it's something wrong with that. So are, 
Hmm. Okay, I see the issue here. It's this right here, okay? It's the less than. We want to set that to uh, uh, less than or equal than. Unless we just want to add a plus 8 here. But I'd rather just do um, uh, less than or equal than just because it kind of like makes sense on how we're viewing it here. So just change this symbol right here to a less than equal than rather than just a less than. And everything should be beautiful, sexy, ready to go. Alrighty, I'm hyped. Let's go. Also, I just want to say the next video will be infinity. Can't wait for that. Yes! Okay, cool. So we have this done. However, we um, we still gotta do this boost. Okay, so let's just let's just get that done over with. It won't take that long. Okay, it just takes some passion or discipline. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, so we're gonna add TM Pro to our achievement manager as well. Uh, we're gonna add another TMP text called achievement boost text, and we also wanna yeah. That should be fine. And we're going to add a method up here called public big double uh, achievement boost. Okay. And basically, we're just going to add a temporary counter again. And we are going to make a for loop var i equals zero. And i is less than rows dot count. Okay. Cool. And basically, what we check here is if is row completed at index i, or the argument is i. Also, if you guys are confused with argument parameter is, this is the parameter right here, right? The intake, whatever it's trying to take in, right? That's the parameter. The argument is whatever we're trying to put in. So this is the argument right here. This is the parameter. So just, just to clarify. Um, so if the row is completed, then we're just going to simply add to our counter. Okay. And let's actually do uh, achievements completed. Okay. And then we're going to have a, another big double up here. Public big double achievement boost. And that is going to be equal to big double uh, pow 1.5. And I guess I guess each row is 1.5 times. That's my guess. So 1.5 times, uh, 1.5 to the power of achievements completed. Cool. Easy. And then here we return the counter. Okay. So now let's get this text here. Set it in our update. And actually, this is one of those things that we're only going to update every frame. So just for CPU purposes, we're going to do if game.navigation. Uh, where is the canvas? Right here. Achievements canvas dot, uh, active self. Oh, yeah. It's game object dot active self. Then we're going to set the text equal to uh, whatever we have here. And I'm just going to jot that down right, real quick. So current achievement multiplier on each dimension. I know I can't, you can't see it. One second. Okay. So current achievement multiplier on each dimension. And we want to add that dollar sign so we can put variables in the middle of our string. And that is the boost. So let's do, uh, yeah. So boost dot psi right here. Now, the reason why we do dot psi is because we are trying to do the scientific notation. And we add our use, our extendables right here. Our extendables namespace, and we can use dot psi. Okay. And that will be just an X right here. Beautiful. Also, I think we just want to show one decimal. So let's just do one right here. I think that's correct. Okay. So now we actually need to use this boost too. So each dimension will have a, a dimension shift boost right here. Okay. So this temp boost, I believe we just multiply it by the temp boost right here. Oh yeah. So that's the power of this. Yeah. Cool. And then we multiply this by, let's see, actually this dimension boost right here. Uh, yeah, I think I'm just going to multiply the dimension boost by uh, the achievement boost right here. And you simply just do, uh, game dot achievement. I really don't feel like adding it to the script because we're only going to be using it once. So you do game dot achievements dot achievement boost times the rest of whatever it was in dimension boost. Okay, cool. So now it should have an effect and it should show up as 1.5 times. Oh, it's going to give us a null reference. 
Hold up. Okay, we got we forgot to drag this text in here. This achievement molt. So drag this TMP text in here. Okay. And then we are going to see if that works. Yeah, there we go. Now the test to see if it actually works, we can just simply change this and it'll never change, right? You can change it here, right? It'll change until we go back to 1.5 times because that's the correct boost. Now we can just keep going, but I really don't want to. I kind of just want to end this video because I want, because I know you guys are probably getting bored of me talking for so long. So anyways, if you enjoyed this video, if you learned something new, make sure you smash the like button. Subscribe to my channel for new and turn on those notifications for future videos. We're so close to 2,000. I also just want to say Crypto Grounds merch is coming soon. I'm planning on releasing it at 2,500 subscribers, maybe sooner. Okay? So keep you updated if you're interested for that. Also, please give, smash that like button. Give me all the support you can. Help me revive my channel. Every single like and comment helps this, uh, this video grow. So it means the entire universe to me if you guys do that. Anyways, I see you guys in the next one. Peace.